What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time for my favorite video of the week, going over what I think the best plays are. As always, this video is sponsored by our friends at Underdog. Their best ball playoff contest is officially open, and while the current one that's up there is probably going to be filled, or at least be close to filled when you guys are watching this, they're going to open up plenty more after that. I think they're going to do like a really big one soon. So if you want to continue playing fantasy into the actual NFL playoffs, sign up for an account today and enter one of those contests. I drafted a team a little bit before recording this video just to show you guys like an example of what it kind of looks like. Basically, what you're doing is just, you know, best ball for the playoffs. And then obviously, if you pick a player on a team that gets eliminated from the playoffs, well, you don't get that player for the rest of the playoffs. And then the contest obviously ends at the end of it. So you want to be thinking about, well, what teams could make uh, the Super Bowl? But like everyone's thinking that, right? So you're not going to be able to easily stack up like the top two seats. So I went in this example team with a Bills and 49ers stack. That's just kind of what came in naturally. I would never go into a draft just being like, this is what I'm going to do. This just kind of is what happened. So I got Josh Allen, Gabe Davis, Dawson Knox, and Naheem Hines as a stack for Buffalo going against Purdy, CMC, Debo Ayuk, and Kittle on the 49ers side. And then I just have like Derrick Henry thrown in there. There wasn't a really good pick for the stack during that pick. Uh, and then like you still have to make it, right? And, you know, Derrick Henry, if they're going to make the playoffs, he could easily have like a have to have it game in round one, help get you into like the next round and then, you know, advance from there. And I mean, let's be honest, you have to hope for a Bills 49ers Super Bowl, but you have to do that. To win these tournaments, you have to be like, okay, here's who I think is making the Super Bowl. Um, here's who at least could do that. And if you're right, you have a really good chance of winning. So a lot of fun to do right now, and especially right now, because we don't know who the playoffs are going to be. Like, we don't know which teams are making the playoffs. And so especially if you have an interesting take, like you think the Chargers, the Ravens, maybe the Seahawks are going to make playoffs and then advance well, you can stack up those teams really easily, get some awesome stacks, like Seahawks especially, I feel like, when I was doing that draft, I noticed some players were very late, and if they happen to make playoffs, keep advancing, like, you're going to have a really, really nice stack for that one. So if you got some good takes going over there, um, you'll have a few weeks left to draft. Obviously, like I said, this contest will end, but they're going to open up ones after that. So if you haven't already signed up for an underdog account today, do that now. Use promo code FFA. They will match your first deposit up to $100. That'll give you, if you take full advantage of that, up to 20 of these drafts. Or if you want to put a little bit on the props, go over today, try and grow that balance before then. So who do we like this week? What props are we taking? We'll start off 20 to 1 as usual, though right now I only have four. This one's up to you. You can either leave it as a 10 to 1. You can add a random player that you like that maybe we talk about after the 20 to 1. It's some of my favorite picks. Or you can add in something differently. And there's actually one example I kind of have of what you could do in this game. But we're stacking up the Vikings at Lions game. Uh, this game is tied or within a half a point uh, for the highest total of the week with the Dolphins at Chargers game. And that one is very similar to what I thought last week with the, I think it was what, Dolphins at 49ers, I believe. Um, that game, like I, I thought, you know, people had really high upside. Obviously, like Tyreek Hill, Jalen Wall had upside. Hill was on the hit. Um, but all of their lines really high. And it's similar this week when I was looking at the lines for this game. It's like, I like the game, but there were, you know, weren't a lot of great uh, bets for it. But for this one, um, I think there are. I think there are some lines that we can definitely attack. I don't think that uh, sites are fully accounting for how good these offenses are combined with how poor their defenses can be. We've seen in recent weeks that maybe the Lions are starting to turn around, starting to get better, but they're by no means an elite defense, obviously. Um, and we know the Vikings can produce even against really, really good defenses. And that's really why we like stacking up this game. But you can always just take an individual piece from one of these sides. But for the upside to hit here, I mean, it's just got so much of a ceiling. The Lions and Vikings have allowed the most and second most yards per game this season while ranking last and third to last in yards per play. 
So on the season as a whole, like I said, maybe Lions trending in a better direction. But on the season as a whole, teams are getting a ton of total yards and being highly efficient against both of these defenses. And like I said, we know these both, both these offenses have really good playmakers. So how do we want to stack up this game? Um, I think the big key here is how you think about Justin Jefferson, like what your kind of take is on how he's going to perform. If you remember back to week three when these two teams did play, he had his worst game of the season since the Lions played him extremely well. Basically, the thinking is, will that happen again? You take Osborne and Thielen. If you don't think that's going to happen again, leave Osborne and Thielen alone. Take Jefferson. Because if you remember back to the game, Osborne had his best game of the season. Thielen, his second best game of the season. They completely shut down Justin Jefferson. If that's going to happen again, it's not like the Vikings are going to do nothing. They're obviously still going to have a good game. And so it's going to be these secondary pass catchers that are really going to benefit if they are able to shut down Justin Jefferson. Um, I'm of the opinion that the Vikings have learned from that game. They're going to, you know, exit that game, watch the film, see what, you know, didn't work for them. He's been phenomenal in like every game since then. And I think they're going to come into this with like a different game plan, a different mode of attack. And I have a feeling it's going to work. So my picks for this game does include Justin Jefferson over 95 and a half receiving yards then Dalvin Cook, over 75 and a half rushing yards. Jared Goff, over 251 and a half passing yards, which is embarrassingly low. That needs to be like 15 yards higher. And then Amona St. Brown, over 80 and a half receiving yards. Uh, Justin Jefferson, he set this over in seven of the last nine weeks and is an important player for this game, especially if we want to keep the Lions aggressive. If they are able to shut down Jefferson, and then maybe like there's still a chance that Osborne and Thielen just don't get going because they're obviously not as good of players. And so if we get the Vikings side more shut down, well, that's going to be hurting our Lions bets. And so we really want for Goff and for Moner St. Brown to have to keep playing aggressively. We want Jefferson to go off. We want Dalvin Cook to bust off, you know, a 50 yard run. Dalvin, he's hit this over in eight of his last 13 games. Uh, he has 24 and 22 touches over the last two weeks. He has been mostly getting touches on the ground. He hasn't really been used that much as a wide receiver this season. Um, I was going to do his over on the total yards, but for total yards, he'd need like close to 30 receiving yards just to make that worthwhile. And again, they haven't really used him that much in the passing game. It's mostly been as an early down grinder. And that's fine if we're just taking the rushing yards. Um, and also, if you kind of look at the defenses that Minnesota's faced recently, Commanders, Bills, Cowboys, Patriots, Jets, those are the last five opponents. They're all really, really good against running backs. So the fact that he's still been hitting this over, again, 8 of 13 games is a decent amount against these really, really strong run defenses. Well, again, Lions trending in a good direction, but much more attackable than those five. Uh, and then on the Lions side, well, Moner St. Brown is just very, very good at football. He hit this over in three of the last four. And while it might seem like a high total for Goff, just like on the surface, the Vikings have been ripped apart through the air recently. Uh, so if Mac Jones, if Mike White can clear 365 passing yards each, I think Goff can hit 200 and 50. So that's the parlay I like this week. Again, if you want to make it a 20 to one and you don't like Jefferson, I would just remove Jefferson and do two of your favorite three between Hawkinson, Thielen, and Osborne, because if Jefferson doesn't hit, then they're more likely to. And if you do think that, like maybe you just correlate those two, take the under on Jefferson and then the over on those players, because if Jefferson goes under, they're more likely to hit the over. So just correlate your bets there. Again, I think I'm going to take Jefferson because if I add Osborne to this. Well, if he hits his over for 35 yards, that doesn't necessarily help Goff and St. Brown. So I want something that's going to help those sides hit. So individual bets. What do we like? Number one bet this week, which is currently 11 and two on the season. We're 11 and two on our number one bet this week. It's Nick Chubb, which will definitely surprise people. And I've already gotten questions about it over 75 and a half rushing yards. Uh, but Chubb's hit this over in 
nine of 12 games this season. The three unders came against the Patriots, Bills, and Dolphins. So he does not like playing against the AFC East. But those teams rank third, seventh, and ninth in rush defense DVOA. The Bengals are not pushovers, right? They're not the Chargers. Uh, they're not, I don't know, I, I guess the Browns, really. The Browns also, obviously, he's not going to play himself. But, you know, they're not a pushover defense. But they're league average, right? And the last time Chubb played against them, he went for 101 and two touchdowns earlier this season. Uh, you're really just fading a blowout here. Like, as long as this game stays remotely close, he should hit this over. Um, the three unders he has this season were not only against elite defenses, but they were also in 23, 22, and eight point losses. So you don't even really need the Browns to win. You just need them to keep it roughly close. Keep them competitive for most of the game. We don't want them losing by 20. I think everyone knows that Nick Chubb, while being one of the best running backs, if not the best pure running back in the NFL, um, he's still game script dependent. Like when they get down 20, he's not going to hit. But I really think they can keep this game close. I do think the Browns are like a, a very good football team. And so as long as it stays close, which I think it can, at least for most of the game, he should definitely hit this over well north of 50% of the time. My second and third favorite props were Goff and St. Brown. So we're now on to my fourth favorite. And that's Trevor Lawrence over 238 and a half passing yards. Um, and I honestly don't even want to say what I have this projected at because it's way north of that number. Um, now, the one thing people are going to be concerned with and probably why the line is so low is because of his toe injury and kind of like missing practices. Actually, I don't even know if he missed the practice. It's more like limited practice. But the toe injury, like that's obviously a concern. Now, my thought on it, and you know, I'm not a doctor. I could definitely be wrong. Uh, but for, from everything that I've like read is that they're managing his reps in practice because why wouldn't you like, obviously everyone needs practice, but at this point in the season, you don't want to throw him out there. If he's recovering from an injury, like just, just let him rest. Um, he doesn't need to like go out there and run routes. He's the quarterback. He's already developed a lot of chemistry with these players, have him rest, have him good to go on Sunday. But then also the toe is not on his back foot. So if the toe injury was on his back foot, we do have a problem because you're pushing off that as a quarterback and there's just a chance that like, you know, certain mechanics are different, that he's got a little bit of pain there. And so he's like under and over throwing at different times. It's on his front foot. Like it's really not going to impact him all that much. It really just is a pain tolerance thing. But again, in, on the front foot, it's really not that much of an issue. Maybe he doesn't scramble as much, but we're taking his passing yards. We don't even want him scrambling at all. So I think that we're really just looking at the matchup here. And when you do, it's like you see they're going up against the number one pass funnel in the NFL in a divisional game that's a must win. Now, I don't think anyone thinks the Jaguars are making the playoffs, but let's be honest. If they win this week, they can pull out a win against the Titans. They're only two games back and they face them again in week 18. So if they can win this week between now and week 18, they only need to pick up one game over the Titans then if you beat them in week 18, you're in the playoffs. So they're looking at this game as a must win because if you lose it, I mean, you go back four games, you have to win out. They have to like lose out. Like it's just, it's just not going to happen, right? So if you lose this game, you're out of the playoffs. And so they're looking at that like, oh my goodness, must win. We're going out there and we're putting together a game plan that makes sense. And the game plan that makes sense is throw the ball with Trevor Lawrence. It doesn't make sense to run the ball against the single most difficult team in the NFL to run the ball against. And when we look at the games that Trevor Lawrence is hitting these unders in, it's like elite defenses or he leaves early with an injury. Like they all make sense. Every single one you look at, like the Colts games, uh, the Broncos games, like you just look at these games and you're like, yeah, these are incredible pass defenses. Of course, he's not having a fantastic game because this still isn't like, a, you know, a juggernaut offense or anything, but it, just makes sense that he's going to have significant volume this weekend. The Titans have faced the most pass attempts per game, the second most passing yards per game compared to the second fewest rush attempts, the third fewest rushing yards. You don't run the ball in the Titans, you throw it. It just makes complete sense. And it makes sense to correlate this. If you're going to hit the over on Trevor Lawrence, why would you not attach one of Christian Kirk 
or Zay Jones to that bet. It is incredibly likely if he's going for 250, 260 passing yards that he's bringing one of those two with him. They're clearly the top two receivers on this offense. They account for what, like 45% of the targets on this offense, they're going to be used. Well, Kirk will be used more downfield. Zay Jones more of a security blanket, but they're going to be used plenty. Like if he's going over, he's taking one of them. My lean's Kirk, uh, but take whichever one you want. After Lawrence, my next favorite bet is Christian McCaffrey over 55 and a half rushing yards um, on the surface. Like I've said a few times this season, you see a matchup with the Bucks. You are just trained to think bad matchup. Don't take running backs against that. But it's not this season. They're basically a league average run defense. They're league average in opponent rush play percentage. So teams are running on them at a league average rate. Uh, Rush attempts per game. Rushing yards per carry. Total rushing yards in the game. Like all of it, they're league average. And so you've got a 49ers offense that is built to be successful running the football and be effective in doing so. You've got one of the best running backs in the NFL. Maybe not on the ground, but he's still an incredible running back that you want to get behind as an offense with your third string quarterback making his first NFL start as a rookie, like at home, it just makes sense run the ball. And you don't even need that many rush attempts. Like for him to get to 56, it's not like we're, we're asking him to have 20 carries. If he has 20 carries and he doesn't hit this over, I don't know what the 49ers are doing on offense. Like he needs what 14, 15 carries to kind of secure this over. I definitely like that this week. That's going to happen more than 50% of the time. And if you're concerned about efficiency, I think 13 and a half was the over under for the rush attempts. You could take that one instead. After that, my next two favorite are Jefferson and Christian Kirk. We've already been over them. So eighth favorite prop is Garrett Wilson over 62 and a half receiving yards. Uh, Wilson, as expected, dropped a nuke last week. We talked about how that was an explosion spot for him in this video. But even with an 8 for 162 stat line, I don't want to say he left yards on the field because anyone with that sort of stat line didn't leave yards on the field. But had a few other plays gone his way, I mean, he could have pretty easily had 200 receiving yards, which is wild to think about. But that's how good he is. That's how much of an upgrade Mike White is from Zach Wilson. I mean, the man commanded 15 targets in that game. Like, again, a few of them were deep downfield that just missed Garrett Wilson's a stud. He's so, so good at football. And the upgrade, again, from Zach Wilson to Mike White is an unbelievable upgrade. Uh, Garrett Wilson has hit this over in four of the last five weeks. Uh, He already had 92 receiving yards against Buffalo three weeks ago. Uh, His only under in the last five weeks was a Zach Wilson at New England start where Zach Wilson had 44 net passing yards, obviously, uh, through the entire game. That's that's not going to help him hit the over here. So, again... We want to keep betting on Garrett Wilson until books put his lines at like 80 because I promise you to close the season next season. He's going to be one of the premier wide receivers in the NFL. And so while they're going to keep his lines this low, we want to take advantage of that. Final prop will go over today. I've got like 25 lists on the site, but we'll go over number nine now. You can look at the rest over there. Raheem Mostert, over 47 and a half rushing yards. Now, We cannot be sure what the split is here. It seems like Mostert's taken back the 1A spot from Jeff Wilson. He's not going to have a 7-to-1 split. Like, it's not going to be, you know, 14 carries to 2 for Jeff Wilson. It's going to be much closer. Last week was a little bit different. But it seems like Mostert has taken over. Uh, We know that even if the split were even, even if it was a complete just, like, 1A, 1A. Like, they're both getting the exact same amount. Mostert is a highly efficient running back, and the Chargers are one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. We knew last week Miami was going to go pass heavy. We talked about it in this video. They were not going to run the football. You don't run the football in the 49ers. Miami is a very smart passing attack, very smart offense in general. They were not going to run the ball. I mean, 49ers ranked, what, second in rush defense CVOA, first in yards per carry allowed. It's off the top of my head. I don't remember, but it's like roughly that. You look at this Chargers team, they're bottom three. In those categories that we look at rush defense dvoa yards per carry allowed 30th and 32nd the chargers we have attacked them every single week with running backs it has been successful every single time they've given up over 150 rushing yards per game 5.4 yards per carry like most it needs what nine carries to hit this over i haven't projected relatively conservatively at 12.2 and i say conservatively because 
if Miami can get up in this spot and they're being successful on the ground, we could definitely see like both him and Jeff Wilson pushing to like 15 carries each. And, you know, his over under is 47 and a half. Like again, he himself, Raheem Mostert, is a highly efficient running back going up against a team that makes all running backs highly efficient. Like he's just going to have a good game. He's going to hit for a big play or two. And he needs 48 rushing yards in a game that Miami should be up and winning in. It just makes a lot of sense. Nothing's a lock, but this hits well north 50% of the time. So those are my favorite props this week. Remember to sign up for an underdog account today and take advantage of these bets. Take advantage of best ball contest before we get closer to the playoffs and everyone knows who's making the playoffs. And if you do decide to sign up for an account today, use promo code FFA. They will match your first deposit up to $100, which is a free $100. I wish you all good luck this weekend. That, my friends, is in this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.